In this video, I'll be creating a provisioning package that was requested by a viewer of this channel. I'm starting this video from my GitHub page and that's because there are a few bits of information here that I will be using for this video. And I will leave the URL in the description down below. And here you can see the request that I got in my Discord. And it's a small one because it doesn't have many actions in it, but they are pretty unique. And the first action that I need to automate is screensaver settings. I need to set 3D text with time displayed without rotation, screensaver set to 10 minutes, and also to check the option when resuming display the logo on screen. And this is one of the unique actions that I need to automate because I didn't know that people are still using screensavers. And I also didn't have experience in configuring them automatically. And the next action that I need to automate is a start menu layout. This is pretty easy. Next one is to configure default programs. I need to set Google Chrome as the default browser, Outlook as the default mail client, and Adobe Reader as the default PDF reader. After that, I need to create two directories in user profile, directory A and directory B. This is a very easy action and after that I need to disable sound by default and by disable this guy means mute and this one was a pretty tricky action to implement. And the next action is to disable OneDrive but instead of disabling it I will just prevent OneDrive from installing. And the last action is to remove program shortcuts from the desktop. And that's basically it for the request that you see here. I also did chat with this person on Discord and he made few adjustments. So he wants to enable file extensions, make sure that mail2 is set to Outlook and also leave the recycle bin on the desktop. That means that we only need to remove program shortcuts from the desktop. And that's it for the request. Now let's talk about the package that I will be creating. Here you can see all the actions that will be performed by the package. And the package will have two stages. Here you can see all the actions in stage one. All actions in here will be performed in the out of the box experience. And then we have stage two and all actions in here will be performed after out of the box experience in user's desktop. And to be more precise, all actions that we have in this package in stage two will be performed once for each user that will be created on the computer. And now I will go through each action in more detail. So in stage one first, the package will skip out of the box experience. After that, it will execute a PowerShell script called UB setup. And this is the main script that is responsible for configuring the computer and also executing other PowerShell scripts. And after the script is executed, almost instantly it will execute another script called Ubi Chocolatey. And this script is responsible for performing offline chocolatey installation and then using chocolatey to install the packages that you see here. So it will install Google Chrome, Adobe Reader and Microsoft 365. And the software installation was not requested by the viewer, but I need the packages installed so that I can demonstrate the features that were requested. Anyways, after software installation, the package will create a provisioning folder in C program data folder. After the folder is created, it will move few files from the provisioning package to that folder. And after that, the package will create few folders in the default user's profile. So here it will create the, the directory A and the directory B that was requested by the user. And I'm creating the folders in the default user's profile because this means that all the users that I will be creating on that computer will have the folders in their profile. And after creating the folders, the package will delete all shortcuts in the public user's desktop. And after deleting all the shortcuts, the package will set Adobe Reader as the default PDF reader, Google Chrome as the default browser, Outlook as the default mail client, and after setting all the default applications, it will deploy the start menu layout, create a user admin without a password, disable the privacy experience, prevent OneDrive from installing, and also configure active setup to execute users commands.batch file using run once. And this batch file will be executed in stage two. It will be responsible for importing screensaver settings, enabling file extensions, muting the audio, and removing program shortcuts from the user's desktop. And that's it for all the actions that this provisioning package will be performing. Now, before creating the package, I will be preparing few files for the package. The first one is chocolate installation file. And for that, I will click on the link that I have here. This brings me to the chocolate GitHub page. Then I will click on the release here and then scroll down a bit and I will be downloading this MSI file. So I will click on it and the download should start. 
Then the next step is to create the start menu layout file. And for this step, I will be using a virtual machine that I have here. Basically, it's a clean Windows 11 installation. And if I go to the start menu, here you can see the default start menu layout. And in this case, there is a problem with this layout because from the request, I can see that the person is using Microsoft Office. And the problem with that is that there are a few Microsoft Office applications that are pinned to the start menu that we don't see. And to make them appear, we need to install Microsoft Office and also create a new user account. And after we install Microsoft Office and create new user account, we can unpin the Microsoft Office applications from the start menu. And that means that first I need to install Microsoft Office and for that I will be using Chocolaty because I already have Chocolaty installed on this virtual machine. And to use Chocolaty we need to open a CMD window. So I will type CMD, I will run it as administrator, click yes here. Then I will be going to my GitHub page because here I have the command that is necessary to install Microsoft Office. I will click on the button right here to copy the command, go back to the virtual machine, insert the command here, press enter, and now we need to wait for Chocolaty to finish the office installation. And now that I have Microsoft Office installed, I need to create another user account and sign into that user account, and only then the office applications will appear in the start menu. And then we can create our layout. Now to create a new user account, I will use the command net user john and then let's add add i will press enter as you can see the user was successfully created we can close this window and sign out from the admin user now let's sign into the john's account and as you can see now that we are in the john's account we have more applications in the start menu. For example, we have Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, and we didn't have them on the other user. And now that we have all the applications in the start menu, we can create our layout file. And to do that, we need only to right click on the applications and make sure that you're selecting unpin from start. Don't click uninstall because that will in uninstall the application from the user profile, but it will leave the application pinned and we don't want that for our new computers. So on all the applications, I will just right click and select unpin from start. And now that I have the start menu layout that I want to deploy, I will go back to my GitHub page and I will copy this location right here because this is the location where Windows keeps the start menu layout file. So I will click on the button right here, go back to the virtual machine, open file explorer and insert the location here. And in here, we only want the start to bin file. So I'll right click on it, select copy. Then I will go to my downloads folder because I will be using my downloads folder as a staging area for all the files that I need. And I will place the file in here. And that's it for creating the start menu layout. Now, before creating the package, I need to download a few more files from the GitHub page. So I will go back to the GitHub page. I will scroll up and here we have a few more files. The first one is ubsetup.ps1 script. I will open it. And this is the main script that is responsible for configuring the computer and also executing other scripts. And here you can see that this script will execute another script called ubisoftware. That script is responsible for software installation. Then it will create a provisioning folder in the C program data folder. Here it moves a few files from the package to that provisioning folder. After that, it will create directory A and directory B in the default user's profile. And after creating directory A and B, it will delete all program shortcuts in the public desktop. After that, it will be setting the default program. So it will set Outlook as the default mail client, Chrome as the default browser, and also Adobe Reader as the default PDF reader. And after configuring default programs, it will deploy the start menu layout file. After that, it will create a user admin without a password. And after creating the user account, the script will configure active setup to execute the user's commands.batch file using run once. After that, it will also configure active setup to prevent OneDrive from installing. And the last step is to disable the privacy experience. And that's basically it for this script. Now to download it, we need to click on the button right here. And then let's go back to the GitHub page. 
the next script that I will be downloading is Ubi software that I have here. And this script is responsible for installing software. And I will be using Chocolatey for the software installation. Here you can see the packages that I will be installing. So I will be installing Google Chrome, Adobe Reader, and also I will be installing Microsoft Office. But we don't have it in the list right here because I needed additional parameters in here because I wanted to exclude Groovy and OneDrive. And also this script is responsible for installing Chocolatey itself. So we can use it to install the software packages. Anyways, now to download this script, once again, let's click on the button right here and go back to the GitHub page. The next one is the batch file, user commands. So let's open it. And here, as you can see, we only have few commands. And the first command is for importing a registry file that I will show later. And that file is responsible for screen saver settings and also enabling the file extensions. After that, it will use PowerShell to send this command and this command will mute audio. And the last command is to delete all the shortcuts from the user's desktop. And that's basically it. Now to download this file, once again, let's click on the button right here and let's go and grab the last file that I have in here. And like I said before, this registry file is responsible for deploying the screensaver settings and also enabling the file extensions. The big part right here is only for the screensaver and this small one is for the file extensions. One thing to note that for this video, I set the screen time out time to one minute. So if you want to set to 10 minutes, you need to add additional zero in here. I'm using one minute because this is easier for me to perform the demonstration for the video. And let's download this file by clicking on the button right here and let's go to the downloads folder. And now I have all the files that I need for the package. So I have a registry file, a batch file, two PowerShell scripts, the start menu layout and chocolate installation file. And that means that I can start creating the provisioning package. And to do that, I will go to the Windows configuration designer. Then I will click on file, new project. I will name the project package. Then let's click next, next. Here I will select all Windows desktop editions, click next once again, and then finish. And the first item that I will be configuring is disabling the out of the box experience. And for that, I need to go to runtime settings, Ubi, and then for height Ubi, let's select value true. And the next step for me is to add all the files that I have in my downloads folder to the provisioning package. And for that, I will go to provisioning commands and device context. I will select command files. Then I will click on browse. I will go to my downloads folder. I will select all the files that I have here. I will click open and then add. And as you can see, all the files appeared here. And now I need to configure the provisioning package to execute the UBPS1 script. And for that, I will go back to my GitHub page because here I have the command that I will be using. It's right here. So I will be executing PowerShell, setting the execution policy to bypass, and then providing the file that I want to execute. I will click on the button right here to copy the line, go back to the provisioning package, I will select command line, and I will insert the command line in here. And that's it, now I can generate my provisioning package. And for that I will go to export, I will select provisioning package, I will click next, 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 and then build. Then I will click on the output location that you see here. And in here we only care about this file right here, package.ppkg. I will right click on it, select copy. Then I will go to my USB drive that I have here and I will place the provisioning package in here. And the last step for me is to test this provisioning package and see how it works. And for that, I will go back to my VMware workstation. Here I have another virtual machine that is in the out of the box experience. And to apply the provisioning package, we need to plug in the USB drive into the computer, or in this case, to this virtual machine. And to do that, I will go to VM, removable devices, and then select the USB drive and connect it to this virtual machine. And the provisioning process should automatically start. And now we need to wait and see what's going to happen. And as you can see, the provisioning process is over. Now let's go back to the GitHub page and see if I managed to automate all the steps in the request. 
And for now, let's skip the first request because the screensaver settings require additional reboot. Same goes for the enabling the file extensions. So the next was start menu layout. If I go here, you can see that we have the custom layout that we made on this virtual machine. So that seems to be working just fine. The next one is configuring the default programs. So Chrome, Outlook and Adobe Reader. Now let's go here and let's check the default programs. Let's go to default apps. First, let's check Adobe Reader. Here we can see that it has all the defaults that it needs. Next one is Google Chrome. Same here, it is the default browser. Now let's go to Outlook. And like I mentioned here, the main thing is to see if we have mail to set to Outlook. So if I scroll down, here we have mail to, and we can see that Outlook is set as the default for this. And the next step was to create a directory A and B in the user profile. So let's check that. Let's open File Explorer, go to this PC, C drive, users, admin, and here we have directory A and B. That means that this step was successfully automated. The next step was to mute sound. So if I go back here, we can see that the sound was muted. The next step was to disable OneDrive. Like I said, instead of disabling OneDrive, we prevented it from installing. And to check that, I will go back to the virtual machine. We don't have OneDrive running in here. Also, if I go to apps and installed apps and look for OneDrive, we can see that it's not in the list. Also, if I open File Explorer, we can see that we don't have it in the sidebar. So that means that OneDrive was successfully not installed. And the next step was to remove program shortcuts from the desktop, only leaving the recycle bin. So if I go here, we can see that we don't have any icons on the desktop. By default, there would be at least Microsoft Edge, as you can see in here. And also because we installed Chrome, it also creates a desktop shortcut. But the scripts removed both of the shortcuts from this virtual machine. So that means that this step was also successful. And that's basically it for all actions that does not require additional reboot. For the screensaver settings and also file extension settings, we need to perform a single reboot for the settings to apply. So I will go back to the virtual machine and restart it. And let's wait for the restart to finish. And after the reboot, we can go to the file explorer. Let's go to options, view, and here we can see that hide extensions for known file types is not checked. This means that we have the extensions enabled. For example, let's go to the downloads folder and create a text file. And as you can see, this text file has the .txt extension. That means that this step was also successfully automated. And the last action that we need to check is to see if the screensaver settings are active. And for that, the only thing that we need to do is to wait a few minutes and see if the screensaver will show up. And here you can see that the screensaver settings applied successfully. And if I try to move the mouse, it brings me to the sign-in screen just as it was requested. And that's basically it for this video. Like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And see you in the next one.